Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is William Lease. I am your number one source for data storytelling, data journalism, and everything in between. I use data to tell stories, and the story we're gonna tell today using data is why men have such a hard time on dating apps, specifically Tinder, Bumble, and Hinge, the big three. I go into detail about why that is because yours truly even uses these apps sometimes and wants to know what the deal is. In order to understand why men have such a hard time on these apps, you need to understand the economics of these apps. You got to remember, whether it's Tinder, Bumble, Hinge, men are the customers, women are the product. And a lot of people say, well, men are the paying customers, they're the one who pay these apps. Kind of, but you got to remember in order to get men, aka the people who are going to pay for these apps, you have to make sure there is a steady stream of not just women, but attractive women. Women are the product. Without women, you're not going to get men to come to the apps and use them and make these companies money. And therefore, for that to be the case, then these apps have to keep the women happy. That is the number one priority. Keep women coming to the apps, logging in, using them, and so on. Without that, these apps will not be able to sustain themselves. The problem is, how do you keep these women happy? Well, you show them high quality men. That's what's going to cause them to come back. But the problem is, is that according to a study done by OkCupid that I will pull up right here, 80% of men are considered unattractive by women. As you can see on these charts right here, the, charts, the chart on the left uh, shows this. As you can see, the gray line indicates the male attractiveness distribution and it is very skewed to the left, AKA least attractive. And you can see this in bar graph form on the right. Pretty much only 19% of men are considered attractive by women. Right here, the blue bars. The pink bars represent men. Men, it is a very even distribution evenly distributed, meaning men don't fall into that 80% trap that women fall into. So if you operate from the assumption that 80% of men are considered unattracted by women, then that means, and that's average, that's the average women. I would imagine that more attractive women, it's even less than 20%. But if you operate from this principle, people will call it the 80-20 rule, then 80% of guys don't have a chance on these apps right off the bat, and you have to be one of those top 20% men to have a chance. But remember, that is for the average woman. For attractive women, it's probably less than 20%. And this makes sense, though, because all of human history has showed that women date up and men date down. So a woman who's a 7 out of 10 is only going to want to date 8s and higher. And therefore, the me a man who's an 8 probably is not going to get a female 8, and he's going to have to date down. That's usually how it works. That's how what people call the sexual marketplace works. And so in order to keep these women happy on the apps, women will be shown men above their league. So when they're swiping through, in order to keep them on the apps, in order to keep them happy, they're going to be show high quality men that are above their attractiveness rating. So a female seven on these apps is only going to be shown men eight and above. That's going to keep her on the app because if she's only shown men in her uh on her level or worse, she's not going to want to come back. She's not going to keep swiping because she's going to say, Ugh, the men on here suck. What's the point, right? So you have to show women men above their league. On the flip side, men are not going to be shown women above their league because they are men are going to be shown women below their league because the idea is is that women are being shown men uh, above them, women uh, men be shown women below them, and that is the concept of cohorts. That's how these apps work. They pigeonhole everybody into a cohort. Hinge is probably the best example of this. I can go through my Hinge account right now that I don't really use much these days, but I can just swipe through the whole stack and I'm going to be shown women in my cohort. And cohort are a group of women that you're shown that not only meet your preferences, but also meet their preferences, but it's kind of weird. Um, 
I would say all the women in my cohort on Hinge that I swipe through are not attractive to me. They aren't, but they are the women most likely to match with me. It's two different things. They're not going to show you women in your core cohort that you're going to be most interested in, especially for men. For women, it's different. Women are going to be shown men in their cohorts that they are interested in, but for men, it's women that are going to be most likely to match with you, and therefore that's going to be women below your standards, below your attractiveness rating, because Remember, if women date up, then women in my league are not going to match with me on these apps, and therefore they're going to show me women below my league because those are the women most likely to match with me. That's how cohorts work. When you first log into Bumble, you'll see like a, or when you first sign up for Bumble and initially start swiping, you'll see a yellow bar that gets filled and filled and filled as you go along and keep swiping. It's learning your swiping behavior. It's learning who's attracted to you, and therefore it's going to find you a cohort to place you in. And the cohorts are why men feel invisible on these apps and therefore start to pay to try to fix that because if men are only being shown women below their rating and therefore women that these men are not attracted to, then they're going to feel invisible on these apps and therefore they're going to pay. But that's the problem. A lot of these men think they're banned or shadow banned. You can be shadow banned on these apps. That is very true. But reality, you're just stuck in what's called cohort hell. Other people call it ELO hell, like an ELO score to help pigeonhole you and determine who you get shown to and who is shown to you. ELO, cohort, whatever you want to call it, I call it cohort. You are stuck in that. And the only way you can move up or down cohorts is by hopefully having so many people within your own cohort swipe right on you that you get moved up but that's very rare because these machine learning algorithms are very effective they spend a lot of money on data scientists and machine learning engineers and everything like that it's going to be very hard to game the system so that's the problem that's the first reason why men have such a hard time it's because the cohorts they be they get placed in are only going to show them women below their league or below their attractiveness standard and they're just going to feel like they're not being shown to women that they are actually attracted to, that's because the women on their level or higher, they're going to be invisible to because they're not going to be shown to those women because of how cohorts work. So this leads me to what's called the 80-20 rule. A lot of people will say when it comes to advice about how to succeed on these apps and everything like that, they just say, improve yourself, lift, dress well, look nice, lose weight, all that. Do all that to become a top 20% man. Now, the 80-20 rule is also known as the Pareto principle. And in the dating world, the 80-20 rule basically means that 80% of the women are dating 20% of the men. So the top 20% of men are getting 80% of the women. And then the remaining 80% of men are having to compete for that bottom 20% of women. That's the 80-20 rule in dating. And the question is, does it apply on these apps? Because a lot of people say, you just need to be in the top 20% of men and you'll do very well on these apps. I actually disagree. And I went through swipe statistics to show that. So this first chart I'm going to show you is I Googled what is a percentage of men that swipe right on these apps, so I use Tinder for this example, and what percentage of women swipe right on these apps? Well, according to Business Insider, 52% of men swipe right and 16% of women swipe right. According to Time, it's 46% and 14%. And then according to SwipeStats.io, which is a um, API that allows you to put in your Tinder stats from Tinder and have it analyzed, the guy who runs that site says it's 53% for men and only 5% for women. So this is quite a big range. The men is pretty uh, close together, but for women, which number is it? Well, I did some research because you got to remember, these numbers represent the average man and the average woman. So if the average 5 out of 10 woman is swiping right only 16% of the time or even 5% of the time, what do you think the a, a 7 out of 10 woman is doing or an 8 out of 10 woman? She's probably swiping right a lot less than 5%. So what I did is I went on to Reddit and went to the Tinder subreddit and people will post their swipe data on there. And so I found the first 10 swipe data posts for men and compiled the information to see um, if this could be verified. So what I found is that among these 10 
uh, users who posted their swipe stats on Tinder, on ab the mean was about 60% and the median was 66%. So obviously, according to the first 10 profiles I found on the Tinder subreddit, these men are not very selective. They are swiping right on the median, two thirds of profiles, and that's ridiculous. Anyone who's been on these apps like I have will know that that is absurd. There is not that many quality profiles on these apps. And I think this shows just how desperate these men are. Like, what is their end game? If it's just a cheap casual hookup, they might not have very high standards. But still, this is ridiculous. And I'll explain why this makes it, why not being selective makes it very hard for men. And why these men are ruining it for the rest of us by being so non-selective. So then what I did is I did the same thing, but try to find female profiles on the Tinder subreddit, but I could only find seven. Not a lot of swipe data is being posted by women on the Tinder subreddit. I searched for a while and could only find seven, but even then what I found was on average, the mean was 7.6% right swipe and the median was 6.8%. So let's say 7%. So these seven women on average only swiped right about 7% of the time. And that was really skewed by profile number two where she swiped right 20% of the time, but everyone else was about 7% or lower. I mean, look at profile number seven. She swiped over 125,000 profiles and only swiped right on 1.1% of them. I mean, that's ridiculous. That's being really picky, but maybe she's an attractive woman and only found 1.1% attractive, but still, I, and remember, I don't know if these women are average or not, uh, but regardless, about 7% right swipes. So ask yourself this question. If, if men are swiping right that we found on the Tinder stats 66% of the time, two-thirds of the time, that means women on average are, are going to match with almost everyone they swipe right with. So it's no wonder they're so picky if every man they swipe on is going to be a match. So that is why these men that are not selective are ruining it for everybody else because it makes women become even more picky because they know any right swipe is going to be a match. And remember, that's the average woman. If the average woman is being swiped right on 66% of the time, you would have to imagine that a woman who's an 8 out of 10 is probably being swiped right on nearly 100% of the time is going to match with everybody. So that means she can be ultra selective. So that was Tinder, though. What about Bumble? People will say, oh, well, Bumble, um, you know, maybe they're not as picky or maybe they are more picky. Well, let's look at Bumble swipe stats. And what I like about Bumble swipe stats is that it shows you your stats for outgoing yes and no and incoming yes and no, unlike Tinder. So this can give you a little bit more insights. So for men on outgoing swipes, uh, according to the first 10 profiles I found on the Bumble subreddit, the average was 51.8% mean and median was 57.2%. So really over half of the profiles are being swiped right on. And again, I can tell you as a Bumble user myself, there is nowhere near that many profiles worth swiping right on. And I will show my swipe statistics, my personal ones in a second, but that's absolutely absurd. And what I found is that some of these profiles are pretty picky, like only 25.9% out, 10.6%, 18.7%. But then you get to like this guy right here at 95%, like how desperate do you gotta be? But regardless, uh, not much different uh, for the Bumble men. Maybe a little more picky than it was we found on Tinder, but still. But then it also shows you the inbound stats. This is how women are swiping on these men. And I found that on average, these men only got swiped right on about 4.6% of the time and a median of 3% of the time. So if you look at the difference between their outgoing yes percentage and their incoming yes percentage, there's a lot of difference. Only one profile had a higher incoming percentage than an outbound percentage. This profile number three, good job for you, 19.8% inbound, but still four out of five women swiped left on him and did not like him, which, um, and that was the best performing profile. Everybody else, not so lucky, 3.9%, 1.4%, 0.5% for profile five. Um, wow. So a lot of these guys have their work cut out for them and it's, it makes it hard. So is this validated by the women bumble stats? So I did find 10 bumble stats for women 
And as you can see, these women are pretty picky. So outbound, so the likes that these women sent, about 3.9% mean and a median of 2%. I mean, look at some of these women, outbound percentages of 0.7%, 0.8%. Like 66 yeses and 8,128 noes for profile number seven. And I'm pretty sure from what I remember is that she was like a 39-year-old. So if a 39-year-old is being that picky, how picky is like women in their prime years of their 20s going to be, right? So, but on average, on these, these first 10 Bumble swipe stats I found on the Bumble subreddit, 2% median. So... 49 out of every 50 guys on average for these women were swiped left. And then inbound, the mean inbound likes they got about 50%. So that syncs up with the Bumble swipe stats for the men we just saw. Uh, these women were swiped right on 50% of the time. So if the average man is only being swiped right on 2% of the time, and the average woman is being swiped right on 50% of the time, that is going to really skew the dynamics and is going to cause women to be ultra, ultra, ultra selective. And so, th therefore, these men, if you start being more picky and more selective, maybe you'll, you'll be able to flip the scales, but that's never going to happen. Men are just too desperate. So what about my data? Here's my stats from my Bumble account. And this was in October. And I wasn't using the best pictures. Um, definitely not my best foot forward. But, you know, this was uh, after about three weeks. I swiped yes 436 times out of about 6,000 or about 7.5% of the time. And then my incoming likes, 183 yes, 1,326 no for an inbound percentage of about 12.1%. So basically seven out of every eight women did not swipe right on me. And people might think that's bad, but remember if the average man is only being swiped right on two to 3% of the time, I outperform the average by a factor of four to five. So honestly, 12% might seem pretty bad, but that's actually pretty good compared to the average. And Unlike most of the men on the Bumble Swipe stats we saw, I uh, had a higher inbound percentage than outbound percentage. So I was picky uh, because, like I said, there's not a lot of good profiles on there, and I'm pretty picky, not because I feel like I'm, you know, uh, an ultra-high-value man, but because there's a lot of red flags that I see on the, that, which I think swiping right 50% of the time is ridiculous. I do. Um, for example, I don't like tattoos and I won't swipe on any profiles that have tattoos. I don't like single moms, so I'm not going to swipe right on any single mom. So that right there will disqualify a lot of profiles for me. And then other things, you know, I won't swipe right if you're not a Christian. Uh, so just a, a lot of these things that uh, are according to my standards. But obviously, you know, that's my Bumble data. Um, and look, look at me, um, judge me as you will, right? If you think I'm attractive or not, it doesn't really matter, but I can show you where I stand in terms of that. So <laughs> there is a website that you can submit your dating photos to called Photo Feeler, and people will like rate your photos. The idea is that you submit a lot of photos and then whichever one gets the highest scores you use for your dating app. So here are the five pictures I submitted uh, to Photo Feeler. And this can kind of pigeonhole me. So I submitted my LinkedIn photo. That's the most active one. My LinkedIn photo has a 9.4 attractiveness rating. Um, my YouTube profile picture has a 9.6 attractiveness rating out of 10. Uh, this picture right here of me sitting on a park bench is an 8.8. .8. This picture of me on Route 66 is a 9.3. And then this picture of me at Churchill Downs is a 9.2. So um, how this rating system works on Photo Feeler is your photos are compared to other photos that have been sent. So the average of those five photos was a 9.3. So therefore, my photos as a whole, 9.3 out of 10, or and it's a percentile. So According to Photo Feeler, my photos are in the 93rd percentile of photos submitted to Photo Feeler, so I'm in the top 7% of men who have submitted photos to Photo Feeler. Rem uh, keyword, top 7% of men who have submitted photos to fo Photo Feeler. I'm not saying I'm a top 7% man in real life. Uh, that's not what I'm saying, because if you're an attractive man, you probably don't need to submit photos to Photo Feeler. So among the male user base who have sent photos into Photo Feeler, I'm a top 7% there.
But I would say in real life, that's probably not the case. But there's a lot of things I do do right. Um, going back to the 80-20 rule, I mean, if you lift, if you're in shape, if you dress well, um, take care of yourself, eat right, um, do those things, you're probably going to be pretty close to being a top 20% uh, 20 man. Like me, I'm over six feet tall, so that right there, you know, only I want to say 14% of the population is over six feet tall. Um, I make over six figures in income, um, which also is like, I want to say the top 12% of men. So, and I have a six pack. Um, so this, the three sixes, six pack, six figures, six feet. I have all three of those things. And that right there alone, um, puts me, you know, in a good spot. And then, you know, you look at my photo feeler ratings that show, you know, uh, 9.3. I, Am I a top 10% man? I don't know. Um, I would say, yeah, I'm probably top 20%. Uh, there's th some things that hold me back. You know, I would say my facial attractiveness is probably average. I would say I'm not a big guy. I'm lean. Um, I'm muscular, but I'm not big. I don't have a big frame. I don't take up a lot of space. So women who are looking for like a big guy, like with a big frame and that's not me. I have the body of a distance runner because I run marathons. What I'm trying to say here is that being in the top 20% can only get you so far, um, especially on these dating apps. The top, I would say the 80-20 rule really probably applies more to like in-person interactions, but for dating apps, I would say it's probably closer as we've seen with the swipe data to the 98-2 rule because someone who's on these apps, I don't really have as much success as people think. And therefore, it's probably closer to like a 95-5 rule or a 98-2 rule. Um, I want to use an example. So on Reddit, you know, especially on the Hinge subreddit, people will submit their profile for review and critique. And so for the sake of this video, I submitted my Hinge profile on the Hinge subreddit. And most people who submit their profiles on those subs are, they only get like five to 10 comments max. Um, they won't really get a lot of feedback because so many people do it, it's just kind of saturated. And a lot of the guys who submit profiles to the Hinge subreddit are just, it doesn't matter what critique they get, it doesn't matter what feedback they get, they're gonna have a very hard time. And if you give them any actual advice, like lose weight, go to the gym, you'll be banned, so it makes it even harder. But anyway, I submitted my own profile to the Hinge subreddit, and I got over 250 comments. I mean, it was the most reviewed profile I've ever seen on this that sub. And I got a ton of comments, a ton of feedback. Um, a lot of comments were like, I don't get how you have a hard time on these apps. You know, if you have a hard time, then God help the rest of us. That was the most common feedback I got that wasn't really helpful. But I would say that the most common comments I got was, yeah, you're a conventionally attractive guy, but you don't really like stand out apart from that. In other words, yeah, you're an attractive guy, but so what? And I, I understood the subtext of that. It's, you don't have any status. So status is very important. And yeah, I have a bunch of pictures that show that I am a you know top 20% guy in terms of attractiveness, but I wasn't showing pictures that showed that like I'm a big deal. You know, I'm an important guy with a lot of influence, you know. So what these people were saying is you don't have any status. And I think status is the most important thing that you need to have to succeed on these apps. And without status, you're going to have a hard time. And, you know, I, yeah, I have a good job. I have a, 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 you know, a lean physique and everything like that. I eat right. I dress well and all that, but I'm a nobody. So that holds me back. And so I would say that a lot of the women on these apps are looking for a guy who is somebody. And I am not. And that explains why I have such a hard time. And so I got a lot of private messages from people on Reddit before I got banned, by the way. I've been permanently banned from Reddit since then, um, saying, hey, you're a good looking guy and all that. But, you know, you just don't have that edge. And so the edge being a high status guy. And so what I did is I created a fake female Hinge account and what Hinge does is it shows you a profile called standouts. Basically the top profiles in the area uh, according to your parameters. Because I wanted to see, okay, what guys are doing well on Hinge in the Dallas-Fort Worth area? So the male profiles that I saw come across, pro athletes, musicians, models, and rich finance guys that showed off their wealth in their pictures, like showing them in a penthouse downtown suite or on a yacht popping champagne bottles like that those were the top profiles in my area um so a, a bunch of guys with status or being able to peacock their wealth and their profiles 
that's what these women are looking for. And so that leads me to believe that attractive women, they don't need these apps. They don't. Like if you're an attractive woman, why would you download these apps? Why? You probably have a good social life. You probably have a strong social circle. And within the social life and social circle, you can probably meet a lot of good guys. So why do you need to go on these apps? It's because these women are going onto these apps to find something that they cannot find in their own life, in their own social circle, in their own social life. So they're logging onto these apps to, to hope to kind of like win the lottery and find a very top, top tier guy that they cannot, that doesn't usually come across their life in real life. And so that's kind of the issue is that if you're an attractive woman, they're only going to go on there to find the top, top tier men and try to land them. The, you know, a conveniently and conventionally attractive men like me, you know, top 20% guys like me, they can find guys like me dime a dozen in their real life, you know? So I don't really stand out. I don't really bring anything to the table on these apps that they're not already getting in real life. They're looking for the pro athletes, the musicians, the models, the actors, that's who they're looking for on these apps. They're not looking for normal top 20% guys like me because dime a dozen in their real life. And that is the problem for men like me. So I can either lower my standards and go after women that I feel like are below me and women I'm not attracted to, or I can just try to go after these attractive women that I am attracted to and fail. Because like I said, they can find guys like me in their life easily. It reminds me of the husband store joke. I'm not going to tell it on this video, but it's basically um, women are very selective when it comes to finding someone to date long term, and it's kind of hard to satisfy them. So they're on these apps looking for perfection, like a man who checks off every single one of their boxes and then some. That's what they're looking for on these apps. And most men, especially top 20% men, are not going to be that guy. They're probably going to have to be in like the top 2% to have a chance. But the problem is, if you are a top 1% man, for example, that these women are willing to go after on these apps, these men probably have so many options that they don't need to commit to any of them. They can continue to play the field. Like Leonardo DiCaprio is a great example. It seems like he has a new 23-year-old model hanging off his arm like every six months because he can do that. He'll find a model that's very attractive, have fun with her for a while, and then move on to the next one. High value men, the top 1% men, they don't need to commit to these women. So the women that are chasing after these top 1% of men on these apps are going to be very disappointed. And we've seen that in that West Elm Caleb story that's been floating around the internet lately. It's basically a, I'm guessing a high value man in New York City who's playing the field on these apps and not committing to these women. And these women are getting mad that he doesn't commit to them. But why should he? He's a top 1% man. He doesn't need to commit. But the problem is these women don't go after any other kind of men. They only go out after the top 1% of men on these apps, the emotionally unavailable men who are just playing the field and then get mad when they won't commit. But then they won't give the normal guys who would commit to them the time of day. And it's kind of like a self-defeating prophecy. And that transitions me into the third part of this video, which is the red pill part of the video. Now, I'm sure a lot of people, if they haven't already, are going to be like, oh, you just sound like a bitter, angry incel who hates women, blah, blah, blah. You're just mad that you don't succeed with women, so you hate women. That is not true, guys. I am far from an incel. I am far from someone who doesn't succeed with women. I'm far from that. I am just saying that a lot of what I'm saying might be considered what's called red pill ideology in dating and relationships. And red pill ideology is what it is. It's how you respond to the red pill uh, principles that make you what you are. Incels will take the red pill information and use it to sulk and play victim and be bitter and hate women and everything like that. That's not me. Smart men will use the information to their advantage. They will use red pill information to improve themselves and understand where they're, what they're doing and everything like that. So I am not an incel, guys. I, I don't respect incels either, the ones who just sit around talking about how much women suck and everything like that. That's not fun, that's, that's, and that's not me. Um, so just because someone might say some 
hard truths about how dating and relationships really work does not make you an incel or a woman hater or anything like that. It just makes you a realist. Uh, like I said, I'm all about facts and data. And if I have facts and data to support something, then I'll go along with it. But um, what I'm trying to say is that social media and dating apps do contribute to these high standards. And these high standards are also known as hypergamy. For those of you who don't know what hypergamy is, hypergamy is basically the, the notion that women date up. Um, so a woman's not going to, if like a woman's seven, she's not going to date a male seven. She's going to go for a male eight or a male nine. And that women are always going to date a man that is higher value than them. And that is hypergamy. So that is displayed on these apps, as we've seen in the last section with the data. And social media has only made that worse. If an average woman who's not attractive can have an Instagram account and post a picture and get 100 likes uh, in 10 minutes, that's going to massively inflate her self-worth. And on these dating apps, if men are going to be so pathetic and desperate that they swipe right on average 56% of the time or 66% of the time, then all these women who are getting swiped right on are going to get a ton of inbound likes and they're going to think they're a lot more attractive than they really are because of these pathetic men. Social media and dating apps have really warped the marketplace and contribute to these high standards. And that is part of hypergamy. It's like, let's make a deal. That's what these dating apps are like. And that's what makes it hard for men is that on let's make a deal, you know, you have the host, he's like, I'm going to give you $5,000 or you can see what's behind door number three. And most people always pick what's behind door number three because the grass is greener on the other side concept comes into play. And so people will pick what's behind the door because the, the excitement of the unknown, so to speak. So that's why you'll see a lot of men talk about, hey, I matched with somebody on this app. We were having a good conversation and then all of a sudden she ghosted me. 99% of the time what happened is that a more exciting and more interesting and more attractive man came along and she moved on. Um, that's the problem with these apps is that the a more exciting and more attractive person can be just a swipe away. And that's not just something women do. Men do it too. I mean, I'm guilty of it. There was one time I was talking to a girl and then an even more attractive, more exciting, more interesting woman I was compatible with came along and I had to tell the girl I was talking to, you know, hey, I'm just going to have to move on. But at least I was honest. At least I didn't ghost. But that's the problem with these apps is that it's just a swipe away. You know, when do you s settle down and be like, you know what, this person will do or these this group of people will do like when do you stop swiping is the question. And a lot of women and a lot of men, m you know, might be talking to someone who might do for now until someone more better comes along. But when does it end? When do you be like, you know what, I'm going to stop swiping. I'm going to stop seeing what's behind door number five. I'm satisfied with what I have right now. That's the hard part. Social media and dating apps have definitely warped the curve. And so that is what I have to say about that. But it just makes it a lot harder. It makes the standards a lot higher. So what is the overall takeaway of this video? Well, for men, you need to be realistic. Like you could easily drop your standards on these apps and do very well. Like if I was interested in women that are below my standards, I could clean up on these apps, but I'm not. I have too much self-respect. So men, have more self-respect. Be more picky. Be more selective. You, you're not being picky is what makes this so difficult. And also, honestly, men, I would say that <laughs> you have a better chance in real life. Learn how to talk to women in real life. Learn how to approach women in real life. You'll do a lot better. Because I would say the 80-20 rule does apply in real life. You're not going to see like the 98-2 rule like in real life because it's just not realistic. It, you can do very well for yourself if you're a top 20% guy in real life. I, I don't know what I am. I know I'm probably not a top 5% guy. I might be a top 10% guy, but I know for a fact I'm top 20% just because I take care of myself. I lift. I eat right. I'm lean. I'm over six feet tall all that stuff. I'm definitely top 20% and I don't have a problem in real life. I don't have a problem with women uh, approaching them in real life because I've learned how to talk to women in real life. I don't need these apps, which is why I don't really use them much these days because why compete on an unlevel playing field on these apps where women have all the leverage? Why do that when instead you could just learn how to talk to girls in real life and talk to them in person? You'll do a lot better for yourself. And what's the moral of this video for the women watching? Well, I would say just 
lower your standards a little bit. Don't be so selective, but I'm not judging you. I'm not going to hate on you for being selective on these apps because I understand a lot of you women have already have good social lives and can meet a lot of great guys in person. So I understand why you might want to be more selective on the apps. I do. There are good guys out there if you want to give them a chance, but you know, you do you. I'm not going to judge. But anyway, that wraps it up for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I hope you enjoy me telling stories using data in the future. And therefore, come right back here to me, William Lease, for more videos where I do just that. Data journalism, data storytelling. Do nothing without data. And until next time, this is me signing off.